Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another standard game play video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white flicker deck featuring Teleportation Circle alongside Titan of Industry. Circle of 4-man enchantment, saying at the beginning of your end step, exile up to one target artifact or creature you control, and then return it to the battlefield right away. So this is meant to re-enable Enter the Battlefield abilities on our various permanents to generate a ton of value. And one of the more exciting ones is Titan of Industry at 7 mana, a 7-7 seven, seven Reach Trampler that when it enters a battlefield lets us choose two modes between destroying an artifact or enchantment, gaining 5 life, making a 4-4 rhino token, and putting a shield counter on a creature we control. So even if we're pretty far behind on board, the second we slam down a titan with circle in play, we get to gain 10 life and generate a pair of 4-4 rhino tokens, as well as having a 7-7 reach trampler on defense, so that's a great way to stabilize if we're behind on board. And then another exciting creature to flicker is our Sanctuary Warden, 6 mana 5-5 five, five flyer, enters a battlefield with 2 shield counters on it, and when it enters a battlefield or attacks we can remove a counter from any creature or planeswalker we control, including those shield counters, and if we do, draw a card and generate a 1-1 one, one token. So we can play Warden, draw a card, make a 1-1, one, one, end of turn flicker it, make another 1-1 one, one draw a card, still have a shield counter on it, so maybe the next turn we can attack, remove the last shield counter, draw a card, make a 1-1, one, one, and then flicker it once again, rinse and repeat, and keep making 1-1s one, and drawing cards. And then looking through the rest of our deck, of course more enter the battlefield abilities, with Spirited Companion drawing a card, Innkeeper making a treasure to help us ramp, and then at 3 mana Stomper can find a basic when it enters, which will also kind of enable itself so it can attack and block as a 4-4 Vigilance as soon as we get 7 or more lands in play. Skyclave Apparition is our main removal in the deck, exiling an opposing non-land, non-token permanent with mana value 4 or less. And then at 4 mana we can also flicker a Seekas Chariot, because we can also flicker artifacts with our circle, so don't even need to turn it into a creature first, to generate a pair of 2-2 Cat tokens to help us against aggro decks and outgrind control decks. And then looking through the rest of our deck, we also have our Neverwinter Dried at 1 mana to help us ramp, can sacrifice it to grab a forest, and Florahedron can be played as a tap land or as a ramp creature to maybe play a turn 3 chariot already, and then two copies of Emeria Skull as another nice finisher, generating a pair of 4-4 angel tokens, making our other non-angels indestructible. And then a mana base includes Lair of the Hydra as a creature land alongside one Cave of the Frost Dragon, got some channel lands with Aigancho and Boseju, and then a lot of basics to search up with our Topiary Stomper, and then a few dual lands as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one dry it, turn two sack it, and then got a few options at three, although now Circuit Mender into Teleportation Circles looking quite appealing. Opponent holding priority here with their white mana. Maybe pointing towards a march. Opponent's black-white and it's gonna Blood Chief's Thirst or Dried. Fair enough. One Emiria can be played here. And then we're just gonna curve Circuit Mender into Circles, so it's not like we missed out on much. Opponent Asper Colors with a Professor. So probably kind of a mid rangey control deck with Rafine. Don't think I'm in a hurry to exile the Professor with Apparition. Would rather get Circuit Mender going. Going on getting Teachings with Professor to maybe draw two here. It's going to be an Obscura Ascendancy, okay, that explains the turn one pause with the uh, Exile removal spell. So opponent might have an answer to Teleportation Circle, but we also have an answer to Ascendancy. So, hit for two, and then I have to decide if we want to expose Teleportation Circle to March of Otherworldly Light, or if we maybe want to develop our mana first with a Stomper, which I also don't mind. And then hope they use removal on one of those two, instead of on the teleportation circle. Opponent passes with a bunch of removal up, so can play a land, still doesn't quite enable Topiary Stomper. Don't really want to play teleportation circle into removal either, so I'm probably just going for Apparition on Ascendancy. But let's attack first. And 
and then play a lands, play apparition, exiling a the sea, and pass it back. We're doing a good job of emptying our hands, so teachings doesn't draw them any cards. And yeah, there's a march for three exiling stomper. So now hopefully teleportation circle is safe. Although I might just play Emiria's Call next turn. Seems a little bit better. And then we won't have to worry about any instant speed removal once our creatures are indestructible. It's gonna be March of Wretched Sorrow killing Apparition, giving them a 3-3 illusion. So no point in attacking now. Alright, so opponent whittled down our targets for teleportation circle. There's still a circuit mender left, which is not bad. So, attack with our flyers. Maybe bait out removal on one of them. And then get a circle going. Opponent takes out circuit mender, at least we still draw a card. And then Innkeeper, I guess they didn't wait until the end step. Can flicker Innkeeper, make an extra treasure. And now we still have Iganjo available. And then, yeah, we would love to draw Titan to start flickering. Multiple choice for x equals 1. So, yeah, looks like they might be playing the decklist we featured a few weeks ago. But luckily we had the answer to Ascendancy, thanks to Apparition here. Okay, so turn on Cave. Send in the Flyers. And then, is there any need to play Apparition here? I guess it's still fine. Play that, keep my gun in hand. And exile Professor. And then we can flicker Innkeeper once again. Meat Hook Massacre for 4 could be effective here. So, opponent's gonna attack since they're gonna massacre anyway. So, I think we double block, that way our opponent gets their 2 2 token back, and if they wipe the board, they also lose it. And our opponent's kind of forced to massacre anyway to get rid of our angels. So in hindsight the attack might not have been worth it. But we of course know the uh, deck pretty well, so we know what to expect massacre. Ooh, chariot's nice. So can I turn on cave and play chariot? Should be able to thanks to the treasures. At this point I'm not sure if we should still hang on to Iganjo or not. The opponent's deck doesn't really play too many creatures we need to kill with it, so this seems fine. And our opponent's gonna need a few more massacres here to survive. And there's another massacre, fair enough. Takes out all our cats. At least Chariot dodges March of Otherworldly Lights, so pretty difficult for their deck to interact with. So, turn on Cave again, may get exiled, but that's fine. Play Dryads, flicker Chariots, and don't even have to turn it into a creature here, since we can flicker Artifact. So... Don't need to expose it to removal, can just keep it as two cat tokens per turn. Thirst kills a cat, that's fine. So I'm probably not gonna sacrifice Dryads, just keep it as an attacker. The uh, teachings they learned for at the start of the game, probably not gonna see any play here. As we're empty handed, another Thirst killing a cat. Yeah, I mean, for how long can they keep this up is a question. As they're down to one unknown in hand.
turn on cave. And attack for four. And we'll flicker chariot again. And should be able to close out the game next turn. Probably should have played my land out to not enable teachings to even the score. Okay, so that's not a card I included in my build. Gonna draw two. Another nice X spell, so it plays well with Ascendancy. And the March exiles our cat, so yeah, could have gone after Teleportation Circle, but Pwn is still dead on board. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a Promising Hand. Turn 1, Neverwinter Dryads. Turn 2, we can sacrifice it. And then Circle plus Circuit Mender. Not a bad combo until we get to Titan of Industry facing an aggressive red-white deck. So potentially Boros Burn. Okay, I think I still prefer Sacking Dryad over anything else. Okay, maybe Chum Block a Haste creature that gets a counter here. Aspirant is not going to attack right away, just going to turn into a 3-3, so yeah, good start from the red-white deck as well. And then probably go for Circuit Mender plus a tapped land. And we'll make it Florahedron. And then next turn Teleportation Circle, hopefully Flicker Circuit Mender, if it's still there. Otherwise our opponent can just pump Etching, but nope, Royal Eruption kills Circuit Mender. Alright, so now I might regret playing the Florahedron tapped instead of keeping it as a way to ramp, but double Innkeeper is nice. So I could go Innkeeper plus Circle, Flicker Innkeeper. And then next turn at the cost of 3 life I can still play Titan and Flicker it, which does seem pretty powerful. Uh, or we can go double Innkeeper. And then next turn play Titan. I think Innkeeper plus Circle is going to be better here. So we get a double Titan effect, so even if they have a Brutal Cathar to exile it, we'll still get a ton of value out of it. Although the downside is we might have to take 3. And against an aggressive red-white deck, that's not exactly where we want to be. And there's Brutal Cathar just exiling the Innkeeper, so they might have more in hand. Okay, so taking 7, but about to gain 10, so... That's probably a fine exchange. And we can make some Rhinos in the process as well. Shield counter, not too useful when it comes to Brutal Cathar. So probably no point in putting a shield counter anywhere. I guess we can put it on one of the 4-4 tokens. But getting 5 just seems better value. So they have the backup Cathar, sadly. Okay. Can double block etching. And then we still have Circuit Mender plus Circle. Play a bunch of Innkeepers first. Yeah, maybe I can see the advantage of getting a shield counter on the Rhino. So we don't fall behind on board in the case that they do have Brutal Cathar number 2 for Titan. So maybe it was better off uh, making that play. Didn't think we're attacking. Put Flicker Circuit Mender, draw, gain 4 life essentially. So they'll need removal for Circuit Mender. And Emiria is going to be a nice curved upper here. So not too worried anymore. Royal Eruption kills Circuit Mender. And Adversary. Didn't think we'll see any attacks. And Ithika's Chariot also amazing with double Innkeeper and Circle. 
So maybe we prefer Chariot over Amiria's Call. Both are amazing here. Now we'll make the flyers so we can actually start closing out the game. Cancel Flicker and Innkeeper. And I guess Indestructible Rhino could attack since we've got a ton of life anyway. Now the Innkeeper we exiled is no longer going to be indestructible, not that it really matters here. And if we ever find another Titan or a Skyclave Apparition to exile Brutal Cathar, get our Titan back, the game is going to be completely out of reach. But even from this position I don't really see how the Boros deck recovers. They would need a lot of removal and then once we slam down Chariot they wouldn't be able to keep up with the value. So there's going to be a Thundering Raiju. Good card, but there's a lot to overcome here. And yep, yeah, opponent packs it in before even seeing the Chariot. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has potential. It is a little bit slow to get going with uh, two potential tap lands. The Dryad can kind of kickstart or ramp plan, so I'll try it. Ideally pick up an untapped green source turn one. If not, I guess play farmlands. Up against Asper. Okay, so play Dryad might get removed, or we can wait until next turn to play and sacrifice it. Which is maybe better. Although we have double circuit mender we also want to play out. So if they exile Dryads, maybe we're not too upset. As a Vanishing Verse could also deal with a Titan of Industry later. And yep, that's exactly what happens. Now we do need to join to some more lands along the way if we want to actually cast Warden and Titan. So kind of hoping they remove our circuit menders as well. Could also Skyclave Celestus to deny the extra mana, which is also not a bad idea. And then if they kill Apparition get Celestus back, we can maybe chump block the token so Circuit Mender can chump. Fading Hope in response to Apparition is not the sequencing they wanted, because now they didn't get the token, they should have waited for Apparition to exile the Celestus and then, with a floating mana, bounce it. So that was a bit of a strange sequence. Land is good, so now we'll just slam down chariots. And could see another vanishing verse take care of the vehicle, but doesn't seem like they have one. Another indulgence. They didn't strike me like a reanimator deck, but they could have some reanimation synergies, maybe just kind of a indulgence for value. Although Port of Carfell also points towards Reanimator, so maybe they're just missing the large creatures. Land is good. So, time for Circuit Mender. Can crew chariots. And then hit for six, popping a cat. Good practice to copy a tapped cat. So, if they did somehow have removal for the attacking one, we don't get punished. And we're very close to slamming down our bombs. Sanctuary Warden into a Titan of Industry sounds awesome. As our opponent considers. And another Tainted Indulgence. They're close to 5 mana values. Jory Disruption discarded, so that's one to potentially worry about here. Just a Blood Chief's Thirst killing a cat. Okay, so start by crewing chariots, or do we play Stomper? If they have another bounce spell for chariots, I could see the advantage of attacking first. So we can replay chariot the same turn, but getting Stomper down to ramp into Warden sounds like a decent plan as well. And then uh, that can crew chariots, so we can attack with a team. And then if they bounce chariots, so be it. Seems like that's working. 
opponent down to four. They'll need a sweeper to catch back up. And even then they're still facing a chariot. Kaito, probably not gonna cut it. So best they can do here is like a depopulate and then we can still crew chariot for the win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a promising hand. Turn one dry it, turn two sacrifice it. Can follow that up with an apparition which we can then flicker. And now a titan as well. Up against a more controlling white deck. Red-white, maybe a Velomachus reanimator. Dragon's Fire kills Dryad, that's too bad. In that case, I guess we'll play this cave. Then we can still curve Apparition into Teleportation Circle at least. Fable, we won't be able to exile the token, but we can exile the Fable itself. And then don't really want to trade for the Shaman, because otherwise we don't have anything to flicker with the circle. But yeah, eventually we need to draw into something else, because circle by itself, not necessarily doing a whole lot. Can exile the Restoration now, give them a 3-3 in return, as we keep getting hit by the Shaman. Well, if we get to Titan, we'll be able to stabilize with double circle. But getting there is going to be the challenge. So maybe an Asikas Chariot to make a bunch of Tutus can help us stabilize. Also need answers to Velomachus at some points, which the Apparition cannot exile. So There's going to be a Sanctuary Warden, another large flyer. Also can be exiled by Apparition. Opponent attacks, and uh, yeah, maybe I do need to trade at this point. Other opponent will get another 3-3. Three, three. Doesn't feel great, I guess we'll take 5. Innkeeper is something. So, can play Innkeeper, tap Timurius Call, and then hopefully next turn Titan of Industry. And then I can flicker my innkeeper to make an extra treasure as well. Would not have been able to flicker the same innkeeper twice with double circle. So no point in playing the Emeria untapped to play a second circle out. Opponent with her own Emeria's call now. Yeah. So a lot of damage incoming. Can prevent one here, and then probably chump the illusion with Innkeeper, or we can keep the Innkeeper around. Take 10 down to 3. Next turn, Titan can make a Rhino and gain life, and then do that twice, basically. I guess keeping the Innkeeper around to Gain even more life might be worth it. And another innkeeper, so... Don't think I'll be able to play that one. As we have just enough for Titan. So let's make a Rhino gain 5. And then pass. And do the same. Could also try and put a shield counter on Titan. Think we need the extra board presence and life more. And we have another Titan in hand which we can eventually cast. So we're back up to 17. Got a big reach creature in play. Gotta hope it survives. But there's Velomachus. Opponent sends the team. And what does Velomachus find? Nothing? Okay. Well, in that case, block there. Eat their larger tokens, their 1-1. One, one. And then we're taking 14 down to 3. That works. 
Just double checking that this looks acceptable. Maybe a burn spell to finish off Titan. And then we gotta hope to draw a land next turn. Yep, Dragon's Fire finishes off Titan. I guess a land by itself isn't enough as we use double treasure. So I think we're still dead here to all the flyers. Can play Innkeeper plus another teleportation circle. That's not really gonna help much. Do have a cave, but won't be able to turn it on. So, yeah, best we can do is Innkeeper plus either Circle or Florahedron to gain some more life, but not gonna survive the assault from all three flyers. Yeah, just needed, uh, I guess, Titan to survive one more turn. So we could flicker it and then, uh, yeah, probably stabilize from there. So close game against the red-white Velomachus deck. Can get a bit of an attack in. And I guess Innkeeper as well. Flicker, Innkeeper, and Innkeeper. Gains a little bit of life back, but not quite enough. So close game. Invoke Justice, get back Velomachus. That's certainly going to be the final nail here. So possible that a Titan would not have been enough. GG's. Sanctuary Warden can also remove a counter to draw. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand is a little too heavy on the Titan of Industry, sadly. I'm gonna take a mulligan. Okay, this is more balanced. So how do we want to sequence? It is a tough one, because I want to kind of keep everything. But maybe just get rid of Companion, and then keep Circuit Mender as a better flicker target for Circle. And then Chariot, also great with Circle. Although we do still need land number 4, and Companion draws right away versus Mender, which needs to leave the battlefield. So there are advantages to taking the Companion. Yeah, I guess we also have more 3 drops in general we can draw. So maybe we'll keep Companion over the uh, Circuit Mender. And then hope it doesn't get removed right away. But if it does, we'll just play Chariot before Circle. Might be the play anyways, especially against a more aggressive deck. Opponent red-green. Okay, so no turn 3 play, sadly. Don't want to attack with a 1-1 lair. But we've got some nice plays coming up. And starting with Asika's Chariots. This opponent may be a more controlling build. They could have some sweepers dealing with all the tokens, but then we'll still have a teleportation circle to get back on the board. Voltage Surge kills Cat, so maybe just more of a treasure kind of ramp deck with Goldspan Dragon, presumably. Which uh, we can block pretty easily with a Warden or a Titan. Okay, Raichu gets in for four. That's a good one, as it can maybe attack past all the cats we generate. But next turn we can get our Warden down. Might have to block with Companion. If they don't have any removal, I could technically triple block and trade for Raiju, or we can just chump it. It's gonna be a second Raiju, okay. Well, might be able to trade for one of them. So, 
think I'm fine just chumping the 5-5, five five, double blocking the 4-4. Four four. And if they have play with fire, so be it. Okay, trade happens. And I don't think our opponent's gonna like this. Sanctuary Warden. Remove shield counter. Can attack with chariot if we'd like. Copy the 1-1. One, one. Flicker Sanctuary Warden, which will remove a shield counter once again and draw, make a 1-1. One, one. Still protected from Raiju. And we've got a bunch of 1-1s one, now. And next turn, Titan of Industry. Gonna be even more fun. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with another triple Titan opener. Gonna have to mulligan this. And so yeah, we'll keep a more balanced hand with one Titan. And then hopefully turn two Florahedron, turn three Chariots. And given that we have Titan at seven, probably okay to play a tap Demiria. Up against a white deck. Probably not mono-white if they had to play Iganjo turn one. So green-white it is. Turn two Dragon's Guard Elite, okay, so kind of a Magecraft pump spell deck. So I don't expect too much removal for my Florahedron. And then Chariot into Circle is going to be pretty nice. Could maybe see a fight spell, but then we still have a turn 3 Apparition, which lines up quite nicely. Virtuoso is scary. So definitely going to need Apparition plus Circle to kind of stabilize. But our opponent's also running some protection spells, I'm sure, for single green. So don't expect Apparition to necessarily work. So I'd rather get a Chariot down, get a board presence, and then once we're not under too much pressure, we can start taking off their creatures one by one. Homestead Courage, adding a whole bunch of counters. So pretty happy to chum block with our cats just to keep our life total high as our opponent could also give their creatures trample at some point with a charge through instant. Going and discarding a Sejiri Shelter as another protection spell that can also potentially make their creatures unblockable. And the our opponent's building up two big creatures, plus they're probably keeping up a protection spell. So my chum blockers are going to run out pretty quickly. So don't feel too comfortable despite having a nice start here. So do I already want to double chump? Or do we just chump Virtuoso, keep an extra cat? I think I just have to go for Circle next turn as opposed to Apparition. So maybe just double chumping is fine. And then hope they don't eventually kill us with a big trampler. They might be tempted to already give trample here. Opponent just lets damage happen. Maybe deciding against Trample to keep up a protection spell like Snakeskin Veil or Wild Shape. Land is useful, so now we can play Circle and Dryad. So let's do that. And then once we get to Titan of Industry, we can hopefully take over. But for now, I think we're on the chum block plan. It's gonna be a snakeskin veil just to get the counter, so... Maybe hinting at opponents not playing around removal or having a second protection spell in hand. So maybe that sets up our skyclave next turn. And then we can still maybe pay two to sacrifice Dryad, get closer to our Titan. So don't really want to chump with it just yet. So opponent is down to two cards in hand, and if those don't include Trample, we should be pretty safe. But for all we know, we could be dead here. Elite also has an activated ability at six mana to double its counters. It's going to be a Wild Shape, which can also turn Virtuoso into a Trampler. Yeah, this is going to hurt. The good news is that they just play two of their protection spells, so we might be able to stabilize with Apparition flickered with Teleportation Circle. So we're down to six. 
play apparition target elites and that seemed to work pretty flawlessly and uh, I guess we might as well crew chariots attack with it since we're gonna flick our apparition here and then I guess play dryads Maybe the all-out attack was unnecessary, since our opponent does, of course, still get a 2-2 back, which they could pump up. But happy to jump with the Dryads. And the Homestead Courage. Okay, so 3-3 three, three Vigilance. Just jumping, I think. Or we can take 3. And then... Unlikely that they trample kill us next turn. And then we'll have multiple drives we can sack to guarantee getting closer to Titan, which should take away the game. So do I want to crew chariots? No, let's just keep everyone back, flicker chariots, play it extra safe. And then we could crew chariot using the drives as well if we'd like, if we're afraid of trample. But at this point, I'm happy throwing everyone in front of the illusion. Opponent passes. Let's sack a dryad. And that should be enough to play Titan already. And that should be game here. Gain some life, make a rhino. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Teleport Titan. Getting it done. And leveling up to diamonds, sweet. So yeah, we got to see our green-white flicker deck in action. And yeah, overall, if we're facing creature decks, we have enough ramp and life gain to kind of stem the bleeding until we get to our big finishers and eventually teleportation circle to completely take over. If we face more controlling decks, like I guess the Velomachus deck, you could also kind of fit into that category, decks that can go over the top and have a lot of their own powerful top end, we can potentially struggle, especially if the opponent can break up our teleportation circle synergies and maybe just exile or titan, and uh, more controlling decks playing sweepers like Farewell are not where we want to be, as it gets around all the shield counters on our finishers, as well as being able to exile our enchantment, so those are going to be the tough matchups. But overall, pretty happy with how the deck turned out, so that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.